Hello everyone! If you're new to my channel, my name is Julia Surface and I am a rising senior at the University of Tennessee Knoxville and I am so excited to kind of continue and add some more things to my sorority recruitment series. So this is the first sorority recruitment video that I have done for the 2022 recruitment season. I have done various of other recruitment style videos last year. So if you guys wanna go check those out, feel free to do so. It's a new year, it's a new recruitment season. So I am gonna do an updated all about sorority recruitment for 2022. I am actually starting my videos a little bit later than I did last year. I think I was posting sorority recruitment related videos in June. And right now we are approaching the middle of July. So I'm a little bit delayed. I was in summer school, but I'm planning on doing a couple more sorority recruitment related videos before sorority recruitment actually happens in August. So stay tuned for that. And with all that aside, let's just get right on to the video. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, as y'all can tell, I'm definitely not in like a normal space. I'm actually in a hotel room right now. My dad and I are traveling for a family reunion. So yeah, first things first, we're gonna go over the schedule of the 2022 recruitment season so recruitment registration opened may 1st i believe there was a thing called priority registration priority registration actually ended june 30th so by the time you guys are watching this video priority registration is no longer a thing it's not really relevant anymore but i do want to explain it to y'all just in case if you're going through recruitment next year at the university of tennessee you can have an understanding of what early priority registration is. Priority registration, it was from May 1st to June 30th, as I already kind of mentioned. And basically you would get an early move-in time slot guaranteed. What that means is that the university has now started implementing move-in time slots for people to move into their dorms after COVID. I'm telling you guys, y'all might think it's a pain, but I promise you it is so much better than having thousands of girls trying to move into their dorms all at the same time because that's what I had to do my freshman year and it was not a good time. So I promise y'all, y'all are going to love the move-in slots. They are just way more efficient and just way more organized and just better for everybody. But if you did the early priority registration, you got an early move-in time slot, which means that you would move in either the 14th or the 15th of August. So that's the whole spiel with the early party registration, but obviously it doesn't apply anymore because we are literally in the middle of July. Some of y'all may be wondering, well, can I still register for recruitment? Yes, you absolutely can still register for recruitment. Registration closes July 31st. You can register for recruitment between now and then. However, you are not guaranteed an early move-in time slot. Your time slot may be the 16th or the 17th of August instead of the 14th and 15th. The reason why Panhellenic really encouraged people to do their early priority registration was so that you were not having to worry about moving into your dorm during recruitment. Um, however, it is really not that big of a deal. Like, do not stress at all. Literally, the worst case scenario is that you would have to, like, stay in a hotel room for a day or two or you would have to get like family or friends to help you move in while you're going through recruitment but like literally like it is not the end of the world so please 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 like do not be freaking out if you haven't registered for recruitment yet register for recruitment if you really want to do it and like just let everything like fall into place like do not stress this year our recruitment process is going to be fully in person which we have not had a fully in person recruitment process since 2019 so as you can probably guess and tell we are just so excited as a panel community to finally have an in-person recruitment process. I just feel like recruitment in person is way more personable. It is definitely more exhausting and taxing. There are definitely pros and cons to each recruitment style, but I can say we are really excited to like actually have that in-person face-to-face connections with the PNMs. So we are really excited about that and I hope y'all are really excited about that as well. I feel like this year Panhellenic has really done an amazing job 
to ensure that the recruitment process is really focused and based off of the betterment of PM. So typically Go Greek Round would be just one day and you would visit all 13 chapters. But this year um, they're actually splitting it up, which is really great. They've just been very good about seeing what has worked in the past and what has not. I'm just really excited to see how Panhellenic works their very first in-person recruitment in three years and I think they're going to do an amazing job. So PNMs, rest assured that the Panhellenic exec has worked so hard and really wants to make this recruitment process as smooth and easy as possible for y'all. August 15th. So this is technically sort of kind of the beginning of sorority recruitment because this is convocation. Basically what convocation is, is it's when all the PMs go to Thompson Bowling, at least that's how it was for uh, me and I think it was last year as well. Basically everybody gets together and they meet their Gamma Chi group for the first time, meet their Gamma Chi for the first time. It's a huge like informational session. So basically like pan exec will be there, all the chapter presidents will be there. They'll just be giving you basic information about the week, kind of what to expect, what you need to do, all of that good stuff. And I mentioned a Gamma Chi, and if you do not know what a Gamma Chi is, it is a recruitment counselor and she is disaffiliated from her chapter. So she is not hanging out with her friends in her sorority. She's not talking to them. She has no bias towards her sorority at all. She's disaffiliated and like is completely focused on helping her group of PNMs through the recruitment process. Gamma Chi's are required to apply to be a Gamma Chi. They have to go in for an interview. They have to take a whole course. It is truly like a really big deal to be a Gamma Chi. These women are not taking this job lightly whatsoever. We're here to help assist you in any way through your recruitment journey and you should absolutely utilize them because they want to be your friend, they want to get to know you and they want to help you. And they are literally some of the best resources that you can have in recruitment. These women know what it's like to go through recruitment. They've been through the recruitment process before. They're members of their chapter, even though they're currently disaffiliated. They know what it's like to be a member in a chapter. And obviously these women have volunteered to do this position. This is not something that's paid whatsoever. They are volunteering their time and effort to make your process better. And honestly, like they are a little like the superheroes of recruitment. Like they are here to save the day. They're here to keep you organized. They're here to give you advice. Um, anything and everything you could ever need. They are your go-to women. So, so much love for the Gamma Kai's. Definitely utilize them throughout the week of recruitment. They are awesome. Your Gamma Chi group, typically in the past, they've done it by last name. So I was in a recruitment group with people with the last name SU. However, in the past, they've also done it just randomly. So I'm not really sure this year how they're going to do the Gamma Chi groups. It could be random. It could be based on your last name. I'm not really sure what they're planning on doing with that. But really the only time that you're gonna be with your Gamma Chi group is during the Go Greek round. You will travel with your Gamma Chi group to all 13 houses within the two days of the Go Greek round. After everybody votes and everything for philanthropy, sisterhood, and pref, you'll kind of be on your own if that makes any sense because everybody in your Gamma Chi group will have a different schedule. Basically, in the mornings, you'll meet up with your Gamma Chi group, just check in with her um, if you need to talk to her about anything. You're not necessarily traveling with your Gamma Chi group for the entire week. It's really just that one round of Go Greek, which is now split into two days that you will be with your Gamma Chi group. Even though you won't be traveling with your Gamma Chi group for the entire week, definitely take the time to get to know the girls in your Gamma Chi group. I actually still talk and see people that were in my Gamma Chi group my freshman year and you never know who you're gonna meet in your Gamma Chi group. She may become your literal best friend. You just never know. So definitely take the time to get to know the girls in your Gamma Chi group because they are going to be people that you're going to be seeing around campus all four years. After convocation, the next day is going to be the 16th and that is the very first day of Go Greek Ground. So like I said earlier, Go Greek Ground is going to be split into two days, which is 
a new whole like situation that Panhellenic has now just introduced. I'm so so glad that Panhellenic decided to split this up because it was so overwhelming to go to all 13 chapters just in one day. I mean it's just like a whirlwind and you just don't even know what happened. It's hard because you're like, I don't even know what I said in this chapter or who I even talked to in this chapter. Like everything's just like mishmash. So I'm so grateful and so happy for y'all that Panhellenic decided to split up the Go Greek round into two days. What that means is that you will visit all 13 sorority houses. It's kind of like an open house round. You just are getting a glimpse into the chapter, the girls of the chapter. It's very, very fast paced. Conversations are very brief. It's not anything like crazy. Literally the girls are just like wanting to get to know you. But it's not like a super in-depth conversation. It's kind of like, what's your name? Where are you from? what did you do in high school? What'd you do over the summer? Did you go anywhere fun? Do you have any fun vacations? Like things of that nature, like very short to the point conversations. I believe that Go Greek is 15 minute conversations. So like I said, like super fast, like not anything crazy. It may seem like really scary to go to talk to literally every single house, but it is not a big deal. Everybody's just trying to get to know each other. The next round is philanthropy round and that is going to be the 18th and 19th. After Go Greek round, you will vote. So in the past, everyone has used the PNM Companion app. It's basically this app that allows you to rank the sororities based on how you like them. I do not know if they will be using the PNM Companion app again this year, but as far as I'm concerned, I don't see why they would switch software on us. It was used when I went through recruitment, so we're just gonna assume that they're using it again. But after Go Greek round and into philanthropy round, you have to vote. And basically you will choose your top 10 houses that you really liked and that you wanna come and see again. And then from there, you rank them like on the app. It's like one, 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 one. All 10 of your favorite houses will be ranked like one. And then the house that you didn't absolutely just like want to go back to, but you wouldn't be upset about going back to, you would rank that house as two. And then the house that you're like, mm, I don't just love it. You liked it less than your number two house would be number three. And then the house that you rank number four would be like your absolute least favorite house of the day. But let me right now preface that there is absolutely no guarantee that you will get back all of your favorite houses. There's a possibility that you could get back houses that you attempted to drop. And I just want to go ahead and say that that is like literally so normal for that to happen. And it's really like not that big of a deal at all. For philanthropy round, you can get up to 10 houses back. But if you do not get 10 houses back, once again, totally normal, not a big deal whatsoever. Like do not freak out. I think like the average number amount of houses that people get back from philanthropy is like six, I wanna say. So like, please like do not freak out if you do not get 10 houses back. Going to the philanthropy round, it's basically just where you kind of are supposed to talk about philanthropy. You're supposed to get a better understanding of like what every sorority's philanthropy is, kind of the events that we do throughout the year to support our philanthropy. Um, really anything, any questions that you have about our philanthropy, we want to answer those for you and we want you to be as informed as possible because our philanthropies are very important to us and we do take it very seriously and we want you guys to feel that passion from us. Us, but please do not think that philanthropy round has to be all about philanthropy. It does not. Like literally that's kind of like the basis of the day is philanthropy and you should absolutely ask all your questions and get them answered 100%. I believe that we talked to PMs for 30 minutes during philanthropy round. Do not quote me on that, but please, please, please do not feel like you'll have to talk to us about our philanthropy for that entire 30 minutes. Like we want to get to know y'all too. Um, this is kind of a time for y'all to show us like what you're passionate about. Um, if you did anything in high school, if you did community service, if you did any volunteer work, if you played sports, if you did art, anything and everything you're passionate about, like we wanna hear about it. After philanthropy round, you have to vote again for sisterhood round. And the process of voting for philanthropy round is you rank your top six houses 
one, 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 one. And then you would rank your house that you didn't just love, but you wouldn't mind going back to two. You would rank the house that was a little less than your number two house three, and then the house that you liked a little less than your number three house four, and then your least favorite house of the day would be ranked Five. I hope this is making somewhat kind of sense. It's really difficult to explain how this whole process works. And then if you like do not have all 10 houses back, like literally don't worry about it. You won't have like all of those different numbers. It'll be like the same like process. You won't have as many houses to drop drop if that makes any sense <laughs> like when you actually like vote and you see it you'll be like okay yeah this clicks like this makes sense so the next round is sisterhood round and this is the 20th and 21st of august and so basically sisterhood round is just learning about the values of the sorority and kind of getting an understanding of what it means to be a sister in that chapter. I would say my favorite round of recruitment was probably sisterhood round just because I felt like it was kind of a breath of fresh air from the other rounds because Go Greek is so hectic. Philanthropy, like you're still trying to understand like the chapters like vibes, trying to still get more information. And then sisterhood is like at that point, the sorority likes you and like you kind of already like them. And let's get to know each other in a more fun like casual way if that makes any sense. I feel like sisterhood you really are allowing yourself to open up and the girls in the sorority are really opening up. I don't know I like the vibes of sisterhood because everyone's just like so happy wanting to showcase to the PNM why they love their sorority and how the sorority has made them a better person. I just think it's really great also for PNMs because they're able to tell us like what they're looking for in their sorority experience and the type of values that are important to them. That's something that's really important to distinguish when you're joining an organization is, you know, do I feel comfortable here? Do my values align with this organization? Could I hang out with these girls outside of recruitment? Could they be my friends? That's totally something that like you want to get a really great grasp of. And I think Sisterhood Round is like literally the perfect round to kind of get your bearings and see like okay where do i really feel like i fit in where do i feel like i want to be sisterhood round is typically around 45 minutes i like sisterhood round because we get to show off our sisterhood video and all the sororities in ut also have a sisterhood video and i like literally live to watch that video we don't get to see it until like literally the day before recruitment starts and so when we see it, it's like a huge huge deal and every time Time, like we play it um, for PMs, like it just makes all of us so happy. Sisterhood round and sisterhood videos are definitely very special. So the voting process for sisterhood round um, is to go into preference round, which is the very last round of recruitment. Woo -woo. Yeah, once you make it past sisterhood, the day is like on the horizon, guys. If you had a full schedule of six houses for sisterhood, I think that this voting round is absolutely the hardest even if you don't have six houses even if you have three or four houses the voting process is still really difficult but if you have um six houses that you went to for sisterhood you have to cut those six houses down to two which i know that doesn't seem like super difficult to do especially since throughout the entire week you went from 13 houses and you're cutting it down to two so it's like how can going from six to two be that hard but i'm telling you guys it is really really difficult and this is when you would really want to use your gamma kai's to understand like kind of how you're feeling and get an understanding of like what path you want to take for navigating voting for that. So for the voting process, you will put your top two houses as one one in the voting app. And then it's basically the same thing. Like the houses that you don't really see yourself in would be ranked two and then three and then four, etc. But no, sisterhood to pref to me is a huge, huge jump. And that's why I think sisterhood round is such a valuable, important round for PMs just to really like see like where you want to see yourself and who you really made really great connections with throughout the week. And then we have preference round. Preference round is the most serious round of recruitment. It is the very last round of recruitment before bid day. Everyone is just really excited, just so happy that we are going to be talking to girls 
who are just an invest in our chapter is we are it's almost kind of a day of celebration in a way just because it's like we've made it this far in the recruitment process and like this is when it's really getting serious it's a really big day because pnns are literally choosing where they want to go for the next four three two years of their college career and so it's definitely a pivotal day it's like i said very serious chapters typically do some kind of like ritual which means that there's certain traditions that chapters do like singing some chapters will do certain ceremonies like i know some chapters do like flower ceremonies or things of that nature um it's a very intimate setting and during this time pnms are not allowed to talk to other pnms PNMs are not allowed to talk to anybody external of the recruitment process, like your parents. It's like dead quiet in the village. It's kind of creepy in a way, but it's truly for the betterment of the PNMs that they can have the time to focus on themselves. I really encourage y'all to follow that and just really be focused on yourselves. But um, this round of recruitment is an hour long. Like I said, it's very intimate, very serious, and is honestly just such a great way to end the recruitment process and then this will be your very last time voting so if you have two houses you will vote the house that you are really wanting to be a part of as number one and then the house that you would be okay being a part of but maybe um it just was not your number one favorite as number two some people only have one house for preference and that is completely normal if you wanted to accept a bid from that house you would just literally put them as number one one amazing thing that Panhellenic does is if you only have one chapter or if you have two chapters they will pretty much guarantee that you will receive a bid from one of those houses or that house because the Panhellenic community is really big on ensuring that everybody feels at home however I want to be very very sure that I make a clear distinction between having one house versus suicide bidding so what suicide bidding is is that you actually had two houses at pref but there's just one house that you just absolutely cannot see yourself in whatsoever. It just is not the right fit for you and you do not rank them whatsoever. Um, you only would accept a bid from that number one house that you want. If you do suicide bidding, there is no guarantee that you will receive a bid from that house. Um, it's kind of a risky thing. Panhellenic really does not encourage PNMs to do suicide bidding. However, if you truly feel like you are not going to fit in well at that other house, then that is something that you should talk to your game Kai about and figure out. Um, I actually know people personally who suicide bidded and they actually got the house they wanted, but I also know people that did do that and did not get a bid whatsoever. So that's definitely something that you need to talk to your game Kai about. But um, girls who like just straight up have one house and that was not their decision, Panhellenic most likely will assist you in ensuring that you get a bid from that house. I hope that sort of makes sense, but there is a distinction and a difference between suicide bidding and then just having one house. And then the last day, is bid day which is like totally the best day ever the day is like the biggest party and celebration it is just a range of emotions everyone's just so pumped so happy it's like all the stress of recruitment is gone um all the sororities go full out they have the cutest themes ever and pnms will meet in the sorority village with their gamut high groups they will open their bids with their gamut high groups and run home and they'll get like a little tank top and like a little goodie bag and everything and typically pnms will wear like a tennessee shirt to the village and then they'll change it to their tank tops when they get to their house but it is literally the best day ever and oh, I'm so excited. Before I end this video I want to give y'all a piece of advice that was really useful to me when going through recruitment. So I would suggest that every single round that you go to write down notes and who you talk to during recruitment because whenever you're going to vote this is absolutely the most helpful way to remember what you talked about, how you felt about the chapter. It will just give you a lot more clarity when you're making your final voting decisions. I hope this video was helpful just kind of walking y'all through the recruitment process and I will see you guys in the video very soon. Bye!